pull his head up real quick, can't we? You want me on the body side or the other side? Will you be able to look this direction without the sun being too bright? I love it when everything comes together and the final, the, the culmination of all the effort and the trips and uh, getting gear and getting out. Uh, and the, the culmination to me is the, the final picture taking session. All right, Jason, tell me when. Getting back there and getting to hold him and look at him and really get to admire him for what he is. It's one thing to watch him through a scope, but to be down there with him, holding his horns, looking at him, and just seeing the majestic creatures they are. Great time. Right there and up on your side a little bit. It seems one thing is for sure. Show of Support founder and organizer Terry Johnson will never grow out of this thing called hunting. He's killed a great South Texas trophy whitetail, and together with biologist Jason Sikula and rancher Christian Hildebrand, they take their time to get good photos. Here, I'll help you now. <laughs> good. It's the least they could do with such an outstanding buck on this incredible place called the Shiner Ranch. China Ranch is a great place. It's a huge ranch. It's a ranch that they've managed for literally decades and decades. It's worth the trip down here. We just, I love this ranch. I love this family. I love everything about this South Texas experience. One of the most prestigious ranches in all of South Texas, a long history of huge whitetail bucks. It's one place where the family says what they mean and they mean what they say when it comes to wildlife management. Animals that display great genetics are left to reach old age, no exceptions. And the lesser bugs are taken out with no regrets. Terry's hunt began like so many others on the Shiner. This evening we're gonna go to an oak patch on the southeast side of our property. There's a creek that runs alongside of that oak patch. It's, it's fenced in, the whole oak patch is fenced in. Uh, to keep the cattle out. Christian is going to be my guide for this hunt. And one of the deals was to go do some public service work. And that meaning we were going to go out and shoot some of the lesser deer, do a little cull hunting. Before I got an opportunity to take a big deer, first on the agenda was to go out and get one of the less desirables. That thing is thick over here. And this looks like South Texas. Mm -hmm. Started hunting when I was 19. I've been hunting for many, many years and to have an opportunity to be here, it's just unbelievable. Looking forward to what the hunt's gonna be about. Every time I go to a hunt, especially when I go to a new area and, a, and an area where I know there's gonna be big bucks and lots of bucks, lots of deer, and they tell me that they've been seeing them there, uh, just totally exciting. Christian told me we were gonna be hunting over an oat field where they'd been seeing a lot of deer, so got into the blind, got seated in for the evening's hunt. It's great, you get seated in, you get settled down, you start waiting, and, and before long, the first deer shows up, okay, the excitement builds. Everything's now gonna build to a crescendo because you've got stuff moving in. And the excitement, the anticipation of what's coming next, just that's why I hunt. The unknown, just looking forward to it. It's January, post rut in South Texas, and Terry's come to a dead zone, it seems. We waited and waited, and I was very hopeful, but as this evening would prove, we're not going to see just a whole lot. They're up on the fawns. Way over in the corner, a big 10-point buck makes an appearance. Christian reminds Terry this is a young buck, but at least they don't get totally skunked on this windy, warm evening. On the other side, another youngster makes his entry into this huge food plot. Yeah. Terry's lost count how many times he's hunted here at the Shiner. Every year, the Hildebrand family hosts a group of Terry's show of support, American combat heroes. And between all the hunts for heroes Terry organizes, this short trip to the Shiner is his one getaway during hunting season. As the sun starts to collide with the distant sand, Christian knows there's plenty of public service bucks that need killing, but not at this spot. I'm used to coming to the Shiner Ranch and seeing a lot of deer. And uh, to be looking forward to this hunt all year and get down here and, and get in place and not see very much was causing me to wonder what the heck was happening. I knew the rut was winding down. Maybe the big deer were tired, but we weren't seeing much of anything. Those fawns are hardly anything. So 
tried to remain positive, but uh, a little bit of doubt was starting to creep in. As it turns out, this will be the best hunt I have ever been on. We're not politically correct, we just have common sense. Unscripted, unfiltered, unfaltering. Show of Supports Hunt for Heroes offers tributes and true stories of remarkable courage. If these terrorists could come in your bedroom and kill you, your wife, and your kids, and that's what these men are fighting to protect us from, these murdering idiots, and uh, they're taking them out so that we don't have to deal with them over here. Show of Support started it all, just after the shock and awe bound a nation together. Now, years of footage portraying wounded veterans, deer stands, and standing ovations. Hunt for Heroes that started as one man's way to say thanks is now a series that many say is way overdue. <laughs> this is something I'll never forget for the rest of my life. It's just a raw emotion. It's been like a dream. It really has. We still have 40,000 injured troops. It's going to take a while to get around to all of them, but there's no quitting. It'll never stop as long as I'm breathing. western edge of the legendary Texas Hill Country. After eight years of intensive wildlife management, Lonesome Dove Ranch offers trophy deer hunts for the upcoming fall season. Lonesome Dove Ranch, where each hunt is one-on-one -on -one with a spacious lodge, Texas-style meals, and opportunities for rifle or archery hunts. See our website at huntlonesomedove.com and make plans to join us for this first season of Texas whitetail hunting at its best. Huntlonesomedove.com What's your message? Century Graphics and Sign in Midland can help you convey it. Century Graphics and Sign offers the very best in screen printing, interior and exterior signs, embroidery, custom vinyl graphics, helping you increase safety, promoting your company, showing your school spirit, helping you look cool. Century Graphics and Sign, 501 West Industrial in Midland. Find us on the web at centurygs.com or like us on Facebook. Today's business owners don't really want technology. They want solutions to their problems. And sometimes that looks like technology, but other times it's simply a great banker. At Security Bank, sure, we keep up with the latest banking technologies that let you bank anywhere, anytime, but from smartphone to tablet, we've got you covered with real service from real bankers who work as hard as you do. We're Security Bank Solutions. It's a well-known fact the people of West Texas know the importance of hard work, determination, and drive. For years, TCO Field Services has been a part of the expanding petroleum industry. Another well-known fact is the admiration West Texans have for America's troops. Plain and simple, military heroes don't have a better friend than the hard-working folks in West Texas. At TCO, we never lose sight of the job done by our military, keeping us safe here in West Texas. Four seven. Mm-hmm. Thirteen five. I know they know they're deer herd, but I, it's just amazing to be sitting in a blind 100 yards away as this deer is walking in, and these guys can tell you within a few eighths or a couple of inches of what these deer score. And this deer was not one I was shooting for score. This deer was just epitomized a South Texas buck in my mind. Twelve six. The Shiner Ranch has had a biologist working for him, Jason Sakula. He's scoring my deer. 
Uh, he's hands-on on all of it so he can keep up with what the herd is doing out here on the ranch. Hard to believe after the few deer they saw on that first evening hunt that Jason Sekula six, six. would be scoring a big buck for Terry Johnson. But a few days later, this is what happens with patience and persistence. Christian Hildebrand, however, had no idea it would prove to be so hard to find that management buck to kill before Terry was allowed to go after what would turn out to be a 184 and 5 8 10 point buck. Christian Hildebrand's one of the owners of the ranch, and uh, he's my guide on this hunt. Got to know him over the last few years. A, a very good man, uh, got a heart of gold, and knows his deer, and knows how to put you on big deer. I'm still on a mission to shoot a management buck before I can go kill my big buck. Christian's told me about this blind on a power line they have that whenever they put out a little feed, this thing just fills up with deer. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, here comes this big, huge deer. He's got, I don't know how many points he's got. He's got points going everywhere. This is a big deer. Quite a change from last evening's hunt. Even with all the trips Terry has made to the Shiner Ranch, he can't remember when he's ever seen this many great bucks in one bunch. I don't think in your wildest imagination you could imagine sitting in a blind and seeing these kind of deer. It can't be happening anywhere except right here. These, these are unbelievable deer. Uh, I've been on a lot of ranches, been on a lot of hunts, and don't I've never seen anything like it. This is just a mystical, magical place. The deer came and the deer went, and uh, after about an hour or so, it was time to move on, look somewhere else for, look at other stuff. Well, I think that's it. That's it for this spot. Well, that's a lot of deer. It was a great hunt. A lot of good deer. A lot of good young deer. Yep. But we still got some time. Let's, uh... There wasn't a deer in that group you'd want to call, was there? No, no, all too young or... That, I tell you what, I'm glad you got to see that five-year-old because there's a lot of deer, a lot of people that'll never see a deer that big in their life. And to see, to see a deer like that in the wild is... That is awesome. Well, let's go try another spot. I'm game. Unless this deer's a management style deer, it is written in stone, you will not kill a young deer. If you're going trophy hunting, if you're looking for big, mature deer, you're, going, you're looking for a seven-year-old deer. With deer reaching their max and their, the best potential at seven, that's when they're going to shoot them here. Yeah, this is a new rifle. I truly hadn't shot it. I remember the first afternoon we got here and we took my rifle out to the range. This was a new rifle. I had been out here the year before and on the way home happened to make a stop and somebody decided to break into my truck and decided they needed my rifle and all my hunting gear worse than I did. I wasn't in the store literally 30 minutes and I came out to my truck and my rear window had been shattered and all that glass, the way it shatters, was laying there on the ground and I instantly knew down in my gut, uh-oh, this is not good. Uh, they took everything from my dirty clothes to my suitcase to my dirty hunting boots to a rifle at a prize that I'd shot nearly every good deer I'd ever killed. That was probably the most uh, devastating moment to have lost so much so quick. As it turned out, there, were, uh, there was a, uh, a police car not far from me, and I went over and talked to him, and he was interviewing the owner of that vehicle. And I wasn't the only one that day. I was one of six that had just been broken into. As I found out, and then talking to people that know that I-10 corridor, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what, if it's a restaurant or a sporting goods store or, or a Western wear store, there's so much stuff going on like what happened to me. So. Uh, from this point on, when going through that area, I'll just keep going. So this was going to be my first time to break in this new rifle. And that felt really good when I pulled it to squeeze the trigger. This rifle now is going to go with me, and I won't be leaving it in the parking lot anymore. I'm going to make new memories with it. It's going on many hunts with me. I plan on hunting the next 20 years, 30 years. And so I'm looking forward to what this rifle and I are going to be doing in the future. Time is running out, and Terry still got a cull to kill before his trophy hunt can begin, as show of support Hunt for Heroes continues. Stay with us.
Terry Johnson is doing his public service to help the Shiner Ranch before his hunt for a trophy buck can begin. His guide is Christian Hildebrand, and they've slipped into an area that has filled up with whitetail bucks. This is what I was expecting to see at the Shiner. That's what this place is known for. The bucks were coming out of the woodwork, literally. We had them coming from the right, we had them coming from the left. Deer were just pouring into this field. This is why I came to South Texas to see what we were seeing. A deer comes out that Christians want me to kill. It's, it's my turn now to do a public service and do the ranch a favor. Uh, this is a deer that they prefer not to have in the herd. And, uh, before I get to go after my big deer, uh, that's what I'm here to do is take this one out. So he's coming and working his way in and Christian tags him that that's the one we're going to shoot. Yeah, I'm excited that uh, once I get the job done with this guy and uh, he's on the ground, then we're going we're gonna to get serious and go look for a big buck. We've got this little deer walking around these great big deer and what's going through my mind is I'm not going to mess up and uh, miss or overshoot or whatever. But now this guy, we're letting him work out into an area by himself so I can take a shot and what he does is ends up just walking back in the brush and I'm like, uh-oh, uh, Christian is not going to like this. This deer has literally vanished back into the South Texas brush. Uh, he's gotten away. He just got spooked. Happens. Let's wait to see if he comes back. I know what's going through Christian's mind. This deer is he's back in the brush and he's got him a doe back there and he's making babies while these big guys are out here feeding in the field and I didn't do my job. Oh, Terry. You gotta shoot that deer up there. He just looked at us. Yeah, he's looking at us. He's a yellow looking deer. There's a little B short G fours. All of a sudden Christian says, look to the right. Here's the deer you're gonna shoot. And I've let the first one get away. I am not letting this one get away. I'm fixing to do what I need to do so we can go and hunt some big deer. Even though this is not the deer I came to South Texas to shoot, I'm still get just excited as if I was gonna be shooting a big one. This deer, I'm, I'm waiting for him to get in the right position. I'm getting all my stuff together without just cooking everything away. He stopped. I was allowing him to make his way to uh, an area where he's totally clear of everybody. I wanted him out there and all by himself, and he did. He got out there by himself, and he presented the right broadside angle, and it was time for me to take my shot. Head up. Head up. Oh, was that a little quick? Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Well, he was moving, so I, yeah. I didn't want him getting near those others. To shoot this gun at my first animal and to see him hit the ground before the recoil took away my sight picture was just great experience. I like the gun, I like the way it performed, uh, I like that I've done my part for the ranch. In a way, helping the ranch by taking this deer out is, is means as much to me as getting a bigger buck. Uh, this is something that really helps their herd and, and helps them with what they're trying to achieve. So I'm, I'm trying to do my part and I want to get my part right. Now see why, yeah, up close, yeah. He's a good one to take. Yeah. That's a great one. Good management tool. We just saw so many more deer that were bigger than him. Yeah, I'm, you get a deer like ready. this. Yeah. The second Same. set of antlers. Mm -hmm. He's got no brow tines, tines that are inch long. Yeah. He's got real short G3s. He's just not a deer that we want to keep. The deer was dead before he hit the ground, so the gun did what it was designed to do, and I'm thinking now I've got something I can really carry with me the rest of my hunting career. Well, at least we know your gun's on for the yeah, big deer. Yeah, really, I'm ready now. After the so, high fives about getting this job done, like my is, thoughts are right. really about, okay, deer now deer. we get to go after a big one. Terry's last chance for a big buck. As show of support, Hunt for Heroes continues. Stay with us.
show of support hunt for Heroes organizer Terry Johnson finds an opening in his schedule to fit in his one and only deer hunt for the season. Now this morning, it is cold. There's frost on the ground, there's frost everywhere. It's just a beautiful, beautiful morning. I was so mesmerized watching this deer come across the field that all I could do was look at it and look and look and it didn't dawn on me, okay, you need to be getting your rifle ready because he's coming out through the field. After watching him come across and making the decision now's the time to go for him and to be up, did not want this deer to leave. I was, I was praying he would stay put. Get everything in place and I'm liking the setup. Got him in my sight, but I've got deer around him, behind him, in front of him. I'm needing him to move to the right position. It's real easy to let your emotions get away with you, but fever set in, and I'm real noted for doing that. Um, but try real hard, just watch, watch him. Don't look ahead, and just, just let him slowly work into a position to where I've got him right where I need him. All of a sudden, the deer are get jumpy. Uh, we don't know what's got them riled up, but all of a sudden, they're alert and they're looking around. I'm froze. Got Christian looking out there telling me what's going on because I'm not moving. Feels like this is taking forever, but this is one shot. I'm not going to rush. Another shell. Down to the left. He's going down. Get on him. Get on him, Terry. Get on him. He's got his deer behind him. That's it. It's it. He's down. Good shot. Cool. <laughs> now, this has happened pretty quick. Uh, the sun's barely coming up. Uh, we're getting out of the blind to go see him, and this is a lot different than going to kill, uh, see the deer I'd taken the morning before, the day before. You think we can track him? I think so. <laughs> Follow me. This is my trophy. He's laying there. It was a beautiful morning. Again, the, the frost was on everything. Sun's barely cracking up, so the light was perfect on everything. And then to see the steam coming off of the tank, and just to the right of that lays my deer. That was probably one of the best morning hunt I've ever had in my life. He's getting bigger. <laughs> Got ice on his horns. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See it sparkling? Yeah. Well, I've done what I came to do and I've enjoyed sights and had a new experience with Christian uh, that I can put in my memory forever. It doesn't matter how old you get, uh, every experience has its place and this experience will rate high. As the frost melts off the antlers of this great buck, Terry Johnson knows he'll be back again next year. In the meantime, with the show of support Hunt for Heroes, he's got more hunts to organize for America's combat heroes, sharing a passion that seems to never end. Every now and then, I think I've probably been on enough hunts, but looking forward to coming to the Shiner Ranch has always renews that interest in wanting to get back to hunting. And uh, getting back down here has caused me to want to come back again next year, so I'll be seeing these folks again next year.